Okay, part 10 of the video series. If you noticed, I kind of cleaned up a lot of these old random screws that they put in. I don't recommend putting a lot of screws in your transom because it's just another place for moisture to get into. And if you do, I do prefer that they actually get sealed with some sort of sealant around the threads. And I probably pulled out of this transom maybe about 20. Well, they were still stainless screws, but yeah. I'm not sure if it caused any of the rotting. I do see a, a good amount of rotting on this section here. You can press in on it actually. And it flexes, whereas if you go up here, nothing. We see similar flex on that side, that side, of course, along the bottom, and then where the, the pump is behind those fuel lines. All right, so I have someone on the other side holding the outdrive mount, which is this little guy here. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these little nuts as we are ready to pull this thing out. Finally, let's start working on this transom. Now, as I mentioned before, you want to make sure you don't kink these lines to the pump. So you notice there, there is a little bit of extra hose here for it to go down and drop like that. So just keep that in mind as your your partner helps you, is you want to kind of pre-position it, kind of like that. So you do have enough hose to set it down on the ground that way. And then you're not ripping this out. And then the other thing too is they'll need to follow you. So while you're holding this piece, they can hold that. Because it's going to be kind of tough. Depending on the weight of that transom out there, it, it could, be, could be pretty heavy. So anyway, let's go around the back and pull this thing out. All right. And you can kind of see it's already started to separate a little bit as... We transition positions here, so that's good. And of course, your rams that were being held up, this is like the only time ever that you can't secure them upwards because you need to remove this plate. So what you'll do is you'll just simply wiggle this and you'll notice it'll come loose. Let's go ahead and remove it. All right, looking pretty good. One other thing to note, is the power cable still connected here? Got a few questions about what wires go where on your hydraulic pump. So you can either do two things. You can just review this video again afterwards, or you can take a picture of your own ahead of time. But the leads, as they're lined up from top to bottom, you can kind of see there, they are coated with a rubberized compound but that hopefully will help you out be kind of hard to see a little bit in there but yeah we got our green white red and blue there so I'm gonna go ahead and get these uh, disconnected another trick to mention here is you have two wires you've got a, a green and blue which are connected with these larger screws if you'd like, you could actually go ahead and remove just those two and then pull this controller off. And this way you're not having to break one, two, three, four, five different screws. You can just take the top one, which is your green, all right? And then this one, which is your blue. Okay. So once again, green, blue, removed. All right, and then there's a larger Phillips right here. Go ahead and remove that. And then this wiggles up. And then don't forget to save your Phillips there. See if I can get it threaded in. Okay. So now that that is good, we can go ahead and take the electronic breaker, return that back to the boat. A little miscellaneous wire decided to follow and we've now got it completely separated so next thing you're going to want to do is put this whole entire transom 
in a safe location. Okay, completely removed now. We can get a really good view of the damage. Look at that. You can take and squeeze this. Pretty good at t on the top section. But you can see here, this is the sealant that was installed to try to help with that. But as the boat is going up and down and hitting waves, this flex will eventually break this bead and you'll get leaks. So yeah, this looks pretty terrible. Pretty terrible rot. But that's all right, we're gonna make it good. We'll make it real, real nice. All right, so we're back in. You'll see me refer to this as the bowling pin. I'll probably say that a million times, I'm sure. So keep that in mind. Next piece here is we've got a lot of wires. Your configuration will too. Hoses, everything. Like your speed, speed sensor, that's gonna have to get disconnected. So for the next video, that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna start getting into tearing this transom apart. We'll look into taking the carpet off too because we, we need to, as I said earlier, inspect this plywood. I'll probably inspect it about six inches out and see what it looks like, make sure it's still good. It seems like it's okay, but when we start cutting along the edge of that transom, we'll know for sure. The top up here seems like it may not be completely coated with fiberglass, it looks like maybe it just has resin, resin in there. All right, so this concludes part 10 of the series. A little bit shorter than you're used to seeing, but we're gonna start preparing, moving all these wires out of the way. Do the same thing on your boat. Shift cables, if you've got fuel lines, you can leave those there, but I'm telling you it's gonna be nothing but a pain. So you wanna go ahead and remove those. And let's get a good view of the transom with no electrical components. So take some time and, and knock that out. Also keep in mind that anything in this general vicinity is gonna get coated in fiberglass. So you definitely wanna take precaution with your carpet. If you don't wanna get your carpet all nasty, you'll need to start removing that as well. All right, so for real this time, Hope you liked the video 10, part 10 of the series. As always, subscribe, like it if you thought it was helpful, and we'll catch you again on the next episode.